Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be back here. I uh, have been spending most of my summers here for the last eight years or so, but I have recently moved to the Philadelphia area, so it's nice to actually be able to come back for a weekend uh, when I wasn't slighted to be here all summer, like I had usually been. So, um, happy Interdependence Day. <laughs> that is what we're celebrating this weekend. We are all here on this earth to feel our connection with each other, to learn from each other, and to enjoy each other, and to progress forward. You know, years back, I heard this analogy, and I don't know where it came from, but it was told to me as such, when we're in the womb, we're developing hands and feet. We don't need hands and feet in the womb, so what good are they? But when we're born into this material realm, we need them, or else we would be uh, handicapped without them. In the same way, here in this material realm, we are building our soul because that's the only thing we take with us when we die, when we pass on. It's our soul. So what did we do in this lifetime? What did we do in this realm to help that forward, to learn, to grow? And that's why we're all here. And this is why Wonderlust is so wonderful because we get to experience all this with each other, make new friends, and take this wonderful energy back home and, and draw on it in the future. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. So my talk today, getting at the truest core of health or at the truest basis of health, is not going to be about how bad smoking is. And it's not going to be about how good antioxidants are or how bad pesticides and heavy metals are. And it's also not going to be about keeping your mit mitochondria happy. Who here is a vegetarian? Any vegans? Any alkalarians? I always love that one. There was a lot of alkalarians here in Aspen. We're not really going to be talking about food so much now either. Now, food is of paramount importance. It's something that I always do um, an analysis with, with every single patient, because it, it's one of those things that I want to know is, is being handled so that we can move on to the next step, to get the food stuff out of the way. And when I see people really adhering to a special diet, it shows me that there is an interest in that you're questioning what is good for your body and what is not. Because all too often, we think something is healthy for us and it truly is not. And that's when we get food intolerances and, and, and all kinds of uh, problems from food that we otherwise shouldn't um, be dealing with. Pineapple, a, ha a healthy food, right? It cripples me. So you always have to question what foods are making you healthy and what foods might be at the root of not making you healthy. There's so much more, though, going on behind the scenes in our bodies than just food. And our bodies are so much more than machines that are processing food and nutrients. A lot more. So I just want to... Um, share this study that just came out last month. This is hot off the press. So this study that just came out last month um, is showing that a cell gets a mutation and it takes 10 years for that cell to become the non-metastatic cancer cell. That's a 10 year progression to pancreatic cancer. And then another five years for metastasis. And unfortunately, pancreatic cancer is one of those horrible cancers that's diagnosed way too late. And there's a lot of other, this is just one study that we were able to do now. And of course, there are other cancers that probably grow much slower than this. And other cancers that grow way too fast. And that's too bad. And I use cancer a lot as sort of the representation of the immune system. And I also work with cancer quite a lot because I'm working at a cancer hospital. So when all this is going on in the background, and we, and we don't know it, we all could be having cancer growing. Apparently there's something like 1,000 or 10,000 cancer cells in our body that our immune system is taking care of every day. And it feel, it, it feels, I just want to say, like, it feels really good when we feel healthy, doesn't it? When we're balanced 
and we are happy with our body and what it's doing, we're in a really great state. So I just want to take a look at the, of our energetic bodies from the perspective of the chakra system, which we all know about. I have a, even a little great slide here. So when our root chakra is nice and grounded and our second chakra is flowing and our solar plexus is not guarded in fear and our heart chakra is nice and open and the throat chakra is communicative and the third eye chakra is, has ideas flowing and creativity. And when we're connected to energy beyond ourselves by our crown chakra and the world and the universe as a whole, we feel really, really great. And that is something to bring home, to really look at every day. Just like, how balanced are we? Where are there obstacles? Where do things need some help? Every day, taking inventory for our health and finding out where blockages are, where it is. Our, the chakra system is just really a representation, a way of scrutinizing different aspects of the functioning of our body. So it's always nice to take a look at our energetic body and how things are flowing. And when things are flowing and we feel really great, that is when it is so much easier to access love for ourselves. And even better if we can access unconditional love for ourselves. Not love based on, oh, my knee's hurting today, I couldn't do yoga. No, we're talking all the time. And when we have unconditional love for ourselves, we are much more capable of being in healthy relationships. Relationships with a spouse or a partner, relationships with coworkers, relationships in our, in our community and with our friends. And when we have those really nice, strong relationships, that is when we feel a sense of placement, of belonging. And that sense of belonging is so crucial to our health for the rest of our lives. That sense of belonging creates something so much more important than eating an organic diet. It creates self-esteem. Self-esteem, so crucially important. About a month and a half ago, you guys might, might have heard this study. There was a study on NPR. It was all over the news. And the study was done by three universities, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Warwick University, and Emory University. And so they did a study on bullying. And they found out that children who were bullied carried higher inflammatory markers into adulthood. Think of that. Inflammation is what causes all disease. And whether that inflammation is coming from a food that your body is intolerant to, or whether that inflammation is coming from a physical abnormality that your body has, or whether that inflammation is coming from some emotional baggage or a lack of self-esteem, or a certain anxiety that people are carrying at all times, that is really sad, that someone is going to grow and their whole life they're going to feel increased anxiety and depression from emotional consequences and chronic systemic inflammation that persists into adulthood. And inflammation can be measured in the blood. So this is a great study because it's sort of showing us that, hey, we can take this objective measurement and see that there's something going on here. And, and, and correlate it with something that happened earlier in life. So, there was a doctor, uh, Dr. Lydia Tomaszek, and her and this gentleman, Henry Dreyer, uh, they published this book back in 1992. But back as far as 1979, she started studying melanoma cancer patients and found what she called the type C personality. C as a play in words for cancer. Now, what she found was, and I'm going to quote her, they were out of touch with their primary needs and emotions. They took to others, they looked to others for signals on how to think, feel, and act. These patients were pleasers who looked to others for acceptance. Self-esteem in these people? 
Not much, right? Sadly. She found that they did not express anger nor acknowledge fear and sadness. They maintained a facade of pleasantness even under the most painful or aggravating circumstances. So she went on to state that she was able to find evidence that this coping style weakens our immune defenses and leaves us more vulnerable to cancer progression. But it's all disease progression. It's the inflammatory markers that we just saw with the studying that was done on bullying. Now, who here is perfectly balanced? Who here has never been bullied? Who here has never been rejected? And that really hurts when you're betrayed by someone you love. And these are all the little things that we're working out here in this universe, in this material world, with each other. And that's what is so wonderful about life and being on this planet, is that we get to play this out with each other. And so it's all a scale. We're all on a scale. Some of us are much, uh, some of us don't really have our baggage coming up unless something crazy happens. And then it's just like, darn, there it goes. And then for other people, who are really depressed and anxious for what has happened in their lives from severe abuse, they're dealing with this every day. Every time they meet a person, they are dealing with their abuse. So it's all a scale. Mother Teresa, her one mission, she worked for the poor. She worked with the poor. For her, she said, working with the poor is like working with Jesus. They represented Jesus to her every day, day in and day out. Her one thing that she said to do, I make them feel loved and wanted. That was her main purpose, make them feel loved and wanted. Now imagine these are people of the lowest caste in India, and here she is making them feel loved and wanted. That's pretty healing. And they even did a study. So, another study. Great study. I love this study. So they had 30 people, and they had them look at a video of Mother Teresa administering to the poor. And they measured their salivary IgA levels. Now, IgAs are immunoglobulins. And these are immunoglobulins that live in your mucous membranes. So your mouth, your lungs, your genital urinary tract, Saliva, tears are loaded with um, IgA. Um, it's, they're like the guards at the gate for the outside world and your body. And, they, and we're able to measure these because they are in our saliva. And so they had this, um, this group of 30 people look at a video of Mother Teresa. And they measured the IgA levels. And they increased. And they stayed increased for five hours. And then they did something they called freeze framing, where they had people concentrate on the area around their heart and think of someone or something and think thoughts of love and compassion. And the IgA levels increased hugely, and they stayed increased for five to six hours. Then they had them conjure up anger and frustration. Not too hard to do these days, right? Just make a phone call to any corporation, to your cell phone carrier, right? <laughs> and so they had them conjure up thoughts of anger and frustration, and the IgA levels dropped hugely and stayed de de depressed for five solid hours. Think about that when you're flying home and you might get bumped from your flight or your flight's like three hours late, you know? Is it worth getting angry? Is it worth that drop in your IgA levels? Probably not. And then this is a little diagram that you can see here. The anger above, how much they decreased and stayed decreased for five hours, and then below, how much they increased for that long. Pretty remarkable stuff. So I work at a cancer hospital, and I went in to meet with a woman, and she was so incredibly sad, understandably, right? 
And I just felt so bad. I feel bad for everyone going through chemotherapy and everything that they're doing. Um, I really admire these people, anyone with ill health for that matter. But she was so incredibly sad to the point of just inconsolable. And later when I was talking to a colleague about how, I, how bad I felt about her, she said, oh, really? She seemed like she was in a good mood today. You should see her on other days. And I said, wow, who would have thought? Then I went to see another woman. And she's like this little bundle of joy and just diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And she said, I am just so thankful. I was supposed to get on a plane and I threw up. And so I went to the emergency room instead. And I got emergency surgery. Had I not, had I gotten on that plane, the doctor said I probably would have died because I had hours to get the surgery before I would have died. And she said, and I was supposed to be on a five-hour plane flight. She said, thank God I didn't get on that, on that flight. And her whole perspective on everything was really just so bright and, and, and and just so positive. And now, we're not saying that everyone needs to be that way at all times. But changing our perspective is one of the strongest things we can do for our immune system. When we can change our perspective from one of despair to one of hope, or even better yet, of knowing, of a confidence level, that's kind of like what Abraham Hicks talks about. Love her work, love Esther. When we can make that change in our perspective, that is powerful medicine. That can really be at the truest core of our health. And so I want to give you two tools that I always use with patients that I have found have worked just phenomenally. So the first tool in changing your perspective is your, and, and, and this tool is more for when it's an interpersonal struggle, when, when maybe you've had an argument with somebody that you love and you want to see that through to a better place and you want to uh, and maybe you're, um, you're struggling or you're stressed about a project or a class and you don't know how you're going to get to point B and you don't know how you're going to get this, this um, interpersonal relationship with somebody else resolved. You, you just have no idea. Guess what? You don't have to figure that out. One of the strongest tools that you can employ is just going into a three-minute meditation. You're a point A which might be that argument that you're in, say, with a manager or a coworker, even. And all you have to do is visualize point B. And what's point B? Point B is sometime in the future, and everything is hunky-dory. Everything is beautiful and balanced, and you're hugging, and everything is wonderful. That is what you want to visualize, and when you get that visualization, you feel it to your deepest core. You feel it in your heart chakra. You feel it in your solar plexus. We all know how when we feel something bad in our solar plexus, right? You just feel depression and bad energy here. Um, and it's nice when this is open and you're not feeling that. And so you go from feeling this when you're thinking of the person or the situation or the, you know, something that you don't know how the outcome is going to be. And you change that. You put yourself in, in, in point B and you start feeling in your body. And what you're doing is you're feeling in every cell in your body what it's like to be in that better space. And that better space being love and balance and that interconnectedness that interdependence, when it's working, when it's flowing. And guess what? That's all you have to do. And magically, it just happens. Magically, sometime in the future, you're there. And you didn't even have to try. 
It's not your job to figure out how. It's really your job to just show up and do your best. Everything else will work its way out. So that's a really great tool to use anytime you have something that's sort of extraneous. And when we're doing this changing from, say, despair to a better place, we're changing the polarity of ourselves. And when that polarity, when the, when the polarity of all the cells in our body changes, that's when cells are capable of healing. Cells have mechanisms for healing themselves. Cancer cells have a mechanism called apoptosis. It's cell death. The cell is supposed to kill itself so that it does not grow into cancer. That apoptosis gets shut off. So if you have that pancreatic cancer growing for 10 years, isn't it great if you're feeling more of a balance every day so that that apoptosis can happen sometime in that 10 year period? Now, sometimes we get in situations where forget about accessing a better thought, forget about accessing feeling anything. But what I want to say is, the, the second tool that you have at your disposal is gratitude. Gratitude will change you from despair to hope and knowing very fast and very effectively. And so I often tell patients, especially patients who are dealing with chronic diseases and ailments, get a journal and start writing down every day stuff that you're thankful for, stuff that you're grateful for. And start making your list now. Start making your list today when you feel great, when you're feeling wonderful, when you have so much to be thankful for. Because we all have so much to be thankful for. Even in the darkest hour, we have so much to be thankful for. It's all just a perspective. And so when you need to get that perspective changed to a better perspective, if you just got hit by a big whammy and you're going, oh my gosh, and you're in the throes of depression and despair, that is when it's going to be almost impossible to put on a happy face and be like, oh yeah, I'm so thankful. No, who are we kidding? But you can open up that journal and you can start reading all of those things that you wrote down that you're thankful for. And just reading that for two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, it's passive at this point. You don't have to come up with these things, and they're your own. So you're reading a hundred things that you've written that you're thankful for, and you just keep reading it, and you just focus it. And now you're not focused on what has brought you into despair, and you are focused on everything that you're thankful for. That's the gratitude. And that is where true healing can happen. Because think about it. When you get bad news, or when you are in that disparaging state, what's happening to those IgA levels? They're plummeting, right? So, you want to be doing everything you can to be keeping your immune system strong. Some people say, oh, well, you don't believe in the theory of, of um, germs, do you? Like, they're so evolved because they don't believe in germs. And I say this. <laughs> I say this. Germs and microbes do exist, and they do make us sick. But when we are healthy and balanced, and if we can take on the perspective of the chakra system and have you know, everything nice and healthy and balanced, that is going to be when, when the person sneezes next to us on the plane. It doesn't matter. I feel really good right now. <laughs> All the time in my practice, people come in and are like, I have the worst sore throat. 
Do you know what my first question to them? What happened three days ago? I swear to you, 80% of the time, their mouth drops open. And they say, well, I got into an argument with my husband. I bet you did. The throat chakra, communication. It happens all the time. So another little tool is, if you are having communication problems with a person that's really affecting you on a deep level, keep your throat nice and strong. <laughs> do what you need to do to get, get some of those zinc lozenges and make sure that because this is getting weakened, this is your energetic body. And when the energetic body is getting weakened here, then it's more susceptible to getting that strep throat. But when you can keep this energy nice and strong, strep, who cares? Immune system, handled it. IgA levels, nice and high. So enjoy the rest of your time here at Wonderlust, guys. We are all here for this interconnectedness. Take this time, take these days to fill your soul with lots of love and happiness and gratitude and good feeling. And you'll be taking this back to where you work and to your home, to your kids, to your spouses, to your neighbors. And you might even find somebody saying, wow, you look really energetic. You look different. It must have been a great thing you went to. And you can just say, yep, it was. And when you have this great energy That is when you can make others feel loved and wanted. We're all here on this earth to help each other. We're all here together. We're all interdependent. And when we are making others feel loved and wanted, not only is that incredibly healing, for that person who has been abused with no self-esteem or very little regard for themselves. But think about what it's doing for your own soul. It is medicine all around for everyone involved. Happy Interdependence Day, everybody. <laughs>